I'd like to thank those of you who are watching our video and also those who are present with us today. And we're going to start by asking the Lord to bless our coming together. Father God, as we come again another day, we praise you and rejoice, Lord, because this is a day the Lord has made, and we can be glad in it, Father. And we know, Father, as we study your word, your Holy Spirit can truly take your word and make them real to us. So open our hearts, open our minds to receive your word in the power of the Holy Spirit. And again, as always, Father, if there's anyone listening or watching who has not received Jesus Christ as Savior, I want you to know that God loved you so much, he sent Jesus who died for all of your sins, all of my sins, and by placing faith in him, you can be born of his spirit. Remember, God loved you so that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried, and on the third day he arose. Now that's the gospel message, and I don't want you to forget it. And all that you have to do this very moment is put your faith in the finished work of Jesus. We give you thanks, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yay, yay. Man, glad to see you. Each of you turn to the second epistle of John. And you know, uh, this is our, I think, 11th Bible study. And uh, the second epistle of John has only 13 verses, but there is so much in those 13 verses that many times we say, well, that's a small book and it, it won't have very much to say, but it, it has so much to say and particularly in the times that we are living, that as I said, uh, and just in review, the theme of the book is the truth, the truth of God's word, and from the truth emanates love and from love our walk and what we were looking at last week is in that seventh verse that there are many deceivers and what i want to spend some time with this morning is not only are we to be aware of these deceivers, but keep in mind, as a believer, you're going to be tried, you're going to be persecuted, and that every day it's a constant fight between the spirit and the flesh. God has redeemed your spirit, but a lot of people don't want to think that they are free from the cravings of the flesh. Now would you turn with me to Galatians the fifth chapter. 
I want you to see this battle that's going on. Galatians 5. And I'll tell you what, what message to begin with. I mean, what message to begin with. What verse to begin with. Okay, Galatians 5, and we're going to start at verse 17. Galatians 5, 17. Now notice, it says, For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Every day. You're in that constant struggle, that constant fight, the flesh and the spirit. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Brothers and sisters, I'm sure that there have been times you say, you know, I want to do the right thing. But it's so hard to do it. And what it is, is that lust of the flesh. And notice the next verse. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now notice the works of the flesh. Someone like to pick that up at the 19th verse for me? Now the works of the flesh. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Should I go on? Yes, go ahead. Go right I on. warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right. Now, that is a good picture of our present society. And what does it say? If a person is living like this and does not accept Jesus Christ as Savior, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right. Now, the next verse I'd like for you to look at is that our defense against these deceivers and false teachers, the first defense should be the Word of God. You remember we looked at when Christ was tempted after his baptism and, and, and led into the wilderness, each time that he was tempted of the devil, he used the word of God. And I'd like for you to turn with me to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, four through nine. And I want to make it very clear now that this was not written to us, but it was written for us. That's the important thing. We can make application from this. We know that here in the Old Testament that the ch church had not been born. Deuteronomy, what? Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, and I want you to read verses four through nine. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay, and that's why I said I want you to see that God is talking to Israel, but we can make application to our lives. All right. 
And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. All right. Our total being, we should love the Lord. But notice, I wish parents who have young children would see how important it is to instruct your children. Notice the next verses. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. All right. In your heart. And the word of God says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. All right. And Seventh verse. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. All right. Do you see how important it is, parents, that you teach your children the Word of God? That should be the conversation uh, we could say around the eating table. Do you spend time talking with your children about the Word of God? All right, and, and next. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and I shall be a frontless. frontless between thine eyes. And look at the, look at the next one. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Now, brothers and sisters, do the people in your neighborhood know that you are Christian? You may not have a sign out front saying, I'm a Christian, but the way you walk, the way you behave, don't think the neighbors don't know something about you. All right. Now, that's our first defense against deceivers, the word of God. And the next defense that we have is, uh, and I, uh, here's a scripture that has so much power Turn with me to 1 Peter, the first chapter, and we're going to look at verses 18 through 25. And as I said, when I was getting my lesson together, ah, what a joy it was just to look at these scriptures, and we'll... We want to look at the first chapter of Peter. And we're going to start at verse 18. I'm going to read the 18th verse because there's something I want to emphasize. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers. Now, if you've been born again, you've been redeemed. And you hear the term, redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. When I was younger, individuals used to collect stamps, books of stamps. And when you got a complete book, you could go to the store and you could purchase something free because you had a book that would redeem what you wanted to buy. Brothers and sisters, 
before you and I were born of God's Spirit, we were in the slave market of sin. And God chose to redeem us. And how were we redeemed? By the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I know you won't remember these words, but I'm going to share them with you anyhow. In the slave market of sin, you could go to the market and buy something. And the market was called the Agora. And you went and bought something, but that same item you bought, if you chose, you might sell it again and make a profit. And so the Greek had a word, ex agorazo. You can't sell it a second time. But the word that has the most power is the word lutro. And that meant you're set free, never to be sold again. So when you think about what you have, you and I ought to praise God. We have been redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And there are some people who are trying to add to it. When Christ was on that cross, he cried out, it's finished. And you can't add anything to a finished work. All right, let's look at the rest of this passage. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, it takes us all the way back when Jesus, and I say when Jesus, when God redeemed the children of Israel from Egypt, it was by the blood, and it had to be a lamb without spot of blemish. And that lamb pointed to the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, 20th verse. Who verily was noticed, foreordained when, someone tell me. Before the foundations of the world. Before the foundations of the world. Keep going. But was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe, in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. See, ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Yeah, yeah I'd like to just stop there for a moment. Doesn't that sound like John mm -hmm. telling us how important the truth is yeah. and how we're to love one another? Okay, now the next, look at it. But here's, here's the power of the next verse. Be born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. All right. That's what borns us again, brothers and sisters. Faith comes out hearing and hearing by the word of God. You heard God's word. You heard what Jesus said, done for you. And you and I believe in him, and it's by faith plus nothing. You can be born again. All right, continue. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. All right, but notice this 25th verse, and don't forget it. I would encourage you to underline it. But the word of the Lord does what? Endureth forever. 
Go ahead, read it. Oh, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Yes. Just remember, God's word endures forever. And we've been deemed, been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You don't belong to yourself. You've been purchased with a price. And it, the price was the finished blood of Jesus Christ. All right, now, the next defense we have, we can ask for wisdom. Turn with me, if you would, to James, the first chapter, verse number five, and then we're going to see that there are two types of wisdom, and that's also in James, but it's in the third chapter, starting at verse 13. So turn with me to James, the first chapter, Okay, the first one I want is verse number five. James 1, 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and unbrighteth not, and it shall be given him. All right. Brothers and sisters, if you need wisdom, what do you need to do? One thing, ask God. And he's promised he'll give you wisdom. But I want you to go over to the third chapter and notice, and some of us have been guilty of this when we sought someone's wisdom. Instead of asking God, we went to some other person to ask, what do you think about it? What, and they gave us their wisdom. And what I want to, not what I want to, I want to show you that the scripture points out that you have to be careful where you get your wisdom from. Make sure you get your wisdom from the Word of God. Now notice in this third chapter, starting at verse 13. Who is a wise man and doeth with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Now notice, but if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. And again, just notice how many of the writers, James, John, Peter, Paul, how they emphasize the truth. And we know that the truth is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, look at the 15th verse. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensuous, and devilish. And that's why I wanted to point this out, make sure that when you're seeking wisdom, you are seeking the wisdom of God. Now, brothers and sisters, not only do we have that defense, here's one that all of us have access to, 2 Corinthians 12, seven through 10. And we have an example of someone who called on this defense. 
when, 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 you know, sometimes we say everything has failed me. What else can I do? Well, we're going to see when all else fails, what we really can rely on and know that we have this defense. And don't begin what I'm emphasizing. These are defenses against false teaching. Okay, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, starting at verse 7. And I'd like for someone to read down through verse 10 for me. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest in me, on me. Can I keep going? Yes. Okay. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. All right. Now notice what, what Paul said. I had a thorn in the flesh. We don't know what it was. And he prayed to God, would you remove this? But God chose not to remove it. And what did God show him? That my grace is sufficient. Whatever the difficulty or the problem might be that you and I are faced with, brothers and sisters, we always have the grace of God. Now, another one I want you to look at is how God is working in your life. Turn with me to Philippians 2.13. And he's not finished with us yet. He's working a work in our life and we can be thankful that we know that he is the one doing the work. Ephesians, uh, what did I say? 2.13. No? 2.13, okay. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do for his, his good pleasure. His good pleasure. God is working out a work in you. And here's some scriptures that I'm going to conclude our lesson with today. We have the Holy Spirit. Turn with me now to 1 John. And we're in 2 John, so turn with me to 1 John, please. And I want you to look in 1 John, the fourth chapter, verse 4. <clears throat> and then I want you to, we'll conclude with 1 John 5, 4 through 5. Okay, would someone read me 1 John 4, 4? of God's little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes, right. Amen. Greater is he that is in you. And who is that that's in us? God, the Holy Spirit. All right, now let's go over to the fifth chapter, verses four and five. For everyone born of God overcomes the world, 
This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. All right, I'd like to stop there a moment. For what, for whosoever is born of God, what do we do? Overcome we the overcome the world. And this is a victory that overcomes the world, what? Even our faith. faith. What is your faith in, brothers and sisters? Who are you trusting? Man or God? All right, continue. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. All right. Amen. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Father God, we come again to the close of another Bible study. And oh, what a joyous man to see that we have defenses against the wiles, the schemes, and the deceitfulness of the devil. I thank you, Father, again for those who are present, for those who might be watching the video, and we pray that your word has had meaning to our lives, Lord, that we might better walk in a way that would bring glory and honor to thee. We give you praise, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.